Hello guys! I'm very happy to have you here watching my new video guide for secondary school. So let's start. Today we are going to continue speaking on topic it feels like home. We are going to do some listening tasks and grammar tasks. So right now I'm asking you to open your students' books at page 51. And look at the exercise one. Your task is look at the pictures and decide what room or what is in the picture. Before it, I would like you to look at one picture which I have, have prepared for you. It's a picture of a house with the names of the rooms. So, before answering some questions and listening tasks, we should remind the names of the rooms. So, listen to me and repeat. Guest room, study, bathroom, bedroom, living room, hall, dining room, kitchen, Games room, laundry room. You may guess that today we will speak about your favorite rooms or about rooms which are homes for you. For example, a home for me is my study where I can do the things I like, but I know some teenagers whose favorite room is the games room where they can spend some time playing their favorite computer games. So, we are returning back to exercise one. Which is on page 51 in your student's book. And looking at the pictures, now I'm sure you may answer the question. What's this? It's not, of course, the room, but it's a garden. Look at picture number two. It's a bedroom, yes, you're right. And this is the picture of a kitchen. Here is the one of a living room. Now, your task is, task number two, is to listen to four people talking about home while listening to them you should write the names under the correct pictures you see we've got pictures and the numbers and some gaps to complete the names of the people are sophie james mir daniel so right now you are listening to the recording and writing the names of people while listening. Ready, steady, go. Unit five, page 51, listening. Exercises two and three. Number one, Sophie. Where's home for you, Sophie? For me, home is the place where I can be happy. I'm thinking of my bedroom. I feel really happy there. What do you like best there? My desk. It's got the docking station for my MP3 player, of course, with two very good speakers, so I can listen to my favourite music. That's cool. Number two, James. Where's home for you? That's a difficult question. I feel at home where it isn't noisy. Hmm. I think for me, home is the living room at my grandparents' house. 
What things do you like best there? The big soft armchair. It's very comfortable. I love sitting in it and watching TV. Number three, Mia. Where's home for you? The kitchen in the flat where I live with my mum and my sister. What do you like best there, Mia? It's quite small, but it's always busy and full of people talking and having fun. My mum's always cooking something, and I love helping her. She asks me all about school and my friends. I love telling her about my life, and then at the end, there's a delicious cake to eat. Number four, Daniel. Where's home for you? My garden. Your garden? Yes, we've got a really big garden. And what do you like best there? I like playing football there with my friends. It's great. I can forget about everything and just enjoy myself. I think when I'm with my friends, I always feel like I'm at home. Okay. I hope you've written the names under the pictures. So, the next task we should do is exercise three. We should listen to conversations again and we should complete the table with the missing information. The table consists of three columns. The first column is for names. You see Sophie, James, Mia and Daniel here. The second column is uh, for the answers to the question, what is home for them? So here are the beginnings and you should complete them with one word. The third column is uh, to answer the question, what do they like doing there? You will complete this table, but to help you a little bit, we've got an interactive exercise. So you see, it's another variant of your table where there is just a question for Sophie, one question which is in the table for the second column, and uh, uh, the second one for the third column. So it doesn't matter, you are writing in, uh, in a table, uh, but uh, we are listening from this list. So, I will help you with the first one and show you an example. So, let's start listening about Sophie. Where's home for you, Sophie? For me, home is the place where I can be happy. I'm thinking of my bedroom. I feel really happy there. What do you like best there? My desk. It's got the docking station for my MP3 player, of course, with two very good speakers, so I can listen to my favourite music. That's cool. Now, let's listen again and be ready to complete the gaps in your table. Where's home for you, Sophie? For me, home is the place where I can be happy. I'm thinking of my bedroom. I feel really happy there. What do you like best there? My desk. It's got the docking station for my MP3 player, of course, with two very good speakers, so I can listen to my favourite music. That's cool. OK, as I promised, I will help you right now. So, you've heard and maybe you've written the answers. Now it's time to check. What is home for Sophie? Home is where I feel, yes, happy, she says. Number two, what I like doing there. She says, I like listening to my favorite music. Well done. Now it's your time to listen to James speaking about the place that is home for him and what he likes doing there. Ready, steady, go. Where's home for you? That's a difficult question. I feel at home where it isn't noisy. Hmm, 
I think for me, home is the living room at my grandparents' house. What things do you like best there? The big soft armchair. It's very comfortable. I love sitting in it and watching TV. Now let's listen again. Where's home for you? That's a difficult question. I feel at home where it isn't noisy. Hmm. I think for me, home is the living room at my grandparents' house. What things do you like best there? The big soft armchair. It's very comfortable. I love sitting in it and watching TV. Okay, and now it's right time to listen to Mia. Where's home for you? The kitchen in the flat where I live with my mum and my sister. What do you like best there, Mia? It's quite small, but it's always busy and full of people talking and having fun. My mum's always cooking something and I love helping her. She asks me all about school and my friends. I love telling her about my life and then at the end there's a delicious cake to eat. Listen again. Where's home for you? The kitchen in the flat where I live with my mum and my sister. What do you like best there, Mia? It's quite small, but it's always busy and full of people talking and having fun. My mum's always cooking something and I love helping her. She asks me all about school and my friends. I love telling her about my life and then at the end there's a delicious cake to eat. So, and the last conversation we are listening to about Daniel's favorite place or where, uh, what is home for him. Where's home for you? My garden. Your garden? Yes, we've got a really big garden. And what do you like best there? I like playing football there with my friends. It's great. I can forget about everything and just enjoy myself. I think when I'm with my friends, I always feel like I'm at home. Listen again. Where's home for you? My garden. Your garden? Yes, we've got a really big garden. And what do you like best there? I like playing football there with my friends. It's great. I can forget about everything and just enjoy myself. I think when I'm with my friends, I always feel like I'm at home. Okay, pay attention with somebody in the garden and I like doing what they are. So, I hope you've done this exercise. Let's look at the next one which is prepared in the book. We are returning back to page 51 which is uh, in our students' book. Well, it's time to do some grammar tasks. Today, we will speak about small words, modifiers, which help to make our adjectives stronger or weaker. But before I will explain you some grammar points, I would like you to look at task one. Your task is write the names of the person from exercise three who says these things. Then, underline the words before the adjectives and complete the rule. Now, one by one. At first, let's read the sentences and decide who says these words. I feel really happy there. Who says? Sophie, James, Mia or Daniel? I hope you've already guessed. Now, the second one. Our kitchen is quite small. Let's return back and guess who said these words. Write the name, please. And the last sentence in this exercise. The armchair is very comfortable. Hmm, for who? The chair is very comfortable. Do not forget to write his name. And now 
let's underline the words before adjectives. Let's look at sentence one. I feel really happy there. Of course, you have already found adjective. Happy, it's adjective. But what word do we have before happy? It's a small word which I mentioned before. Really? Mm -hmm. So please circle this word. Let's look at sentence number two. Our kitchen is quite small. Yes, small, it's adjective. And the word before adjective is quite, quite, quite. Circle this word. Sentence number two. The armchair is very comfortable. Of course, adjective is comfortable. And what the word is before adjective? It's the word very. Circle it. Now, I would like to share with you some information. Let's listen to me very carefully. The small words which we circled before adjectives are called modifiers. Now I will take a magic pen. So again, they are called modifiers and they are used to say more about adjectives. Let's look. We've got three examples of them here on this slide. Very, really, and quite. Now I will open a secret. Some words can make an adjective stronger. And these words are very, really. Let's listen. We've got an adjective tall. We may say he is tall. He is tall. As simple as that. But it's possible to make the adjective tall stronger. So we should add the word very and put it before adjective. And the sentence will be he is very tall or he is really tall. Let's look at the adjective tidy. My room is tidy. Sounds very simple. But I know that your room is very tidy or really tidy. If we're speaking about, for example, our armchair, so we may say, my armchair is comfortable. A simple sentence. But let's make an adjective comfortable most stronger. My armchair is very comfortable or my armchair is really comfortable. So I hope you do remember there are two modifiers, small words, which we put before adjective, before you see adjective, are very and really. Let's move on. And now let me represent you one small word that will make an adjective weaker. So, not a comparative, sorry, it's a mistake. It should be an adjective here. But let do not pay attention to this because it's just a positive degree. Well, we've got an adjective small, untidy. To make them weaker, we may say, hmm, he's quite small. Your room is quite untidy. Uh, this chair is quite comfortable. So this was just a hint for you to do another just task. 
back to our book one more time. Please, now it's time for you to complete a rule. I have already presented you some information and it's gonna be easy for you to complete this rule. Use words, very, really, and quite to say more about an adjective. The words very and uh, mm -hmm, are, are used to make an adjective stronger. The word mm -hmm, usually means a little bit. You may already guess that a little bit, the word quite we use here. It was a hint from me. Hope you are ready with completing a rule. Now exercise two. Write two sentences about whom using the words. We've got an example, kitchen, and it's a noun, yes, a room is used here, and we've got two adjectives, big and small. So describing kitchen, I may say, our kitchen isn't very big, it's quite small. So you see, I haven't only used big and small, but I put modifiers, very really or quite, before adjective. Adjectives to make them stronger or to make them weaker. Our kitchen isn't very big. It's quite small. Let's look at the Sent no, not sentence, but words under number one. Bedroom, adjective tidy and untidy. My bedroom isn't very tidy. It's quite untidy right now. It's my example. If I will speak about my sofa, I may sofa, I may say yeah, my sofa isn't very comfortable. It's quite uncomfortable. And now, please, without my help, make up the sentence with the third my advice here is. Do this exercise in your exercise books because you do not have space to write there. But to practice the usage of modifiers, in our workbook, we've got more tasks. So let's open our workbooks at page 47 and find exercises under the title modifies quite, very, and really. We'll make just a bit, a bit bigger. And now I hope you are ready. Exercise five. Your task is to write sentences with the words in brackets. Here is an example. I am not happy today. So, and in the brackets, we've got a modifier very. I hope you do remember that we should put modifier very before adjective. Let's find an adjective in this sentence. I am not happy today. Oh, happy is an adjective. So, we should put very before happy. So what sentence will it be? I am not very happy today. Let's look at the sentence under number one. Your grandmother is young. And in the brackets we've got really. Very adjective. Adjective is young. So, we should put really before young. 
Your grandmother is really young. So you made adjective young stronger with the help of modify really. Now your task is to just rewrite the sentence using uh, modifier very. Number three, using modifier white. And number four, using white as well. You may pause the video and do the exercise. Hope you are ready to do exercise six. Your task is circle the best word. Let's look. We'll go to an example. It's 40 degrees today. 40 degrees, can you imagine? It's too hot. Well, but, but how to say it? It's quite hot or it's really hot. Of course, it's really hot. Look at the sentence number one, the first one. That's songs okay. It's quite or very good. If it's okay, I hope it's not just, it's quite good. Yeah? Yeah, it's quite good. So, and now your task is to circle the correct modifier in the second, in the third, and in the fourth sentences. You may pause my video and do the exercise. Hope you are ready. And now it's time to return back to the page in our book. We are returning back to page 51. Here is a very interesting task for us. As our book is think, We've got just a rubric, think self-esteem. And so today we will speak about feeling safe. The first task for you is think about the questions and make some notes. What is the first question? Where do you feel at home? Describe the place. Hmm. I will give you an example. I feel at home in my study where I've got all the things I need for my hobby. And then you may add what things you got. The second question. What's most important for you there? The most important things for me here are my, my favorite items of furniture, an armchair, a sofa, uh, my computer and my laptop. And I like the colors of the walls. And I feel myself relaxed without anybody interrupting me from doing my favorite hobby. It's about me, but what about you? What will you write? What's most important for you there? Number three, what does that place feel like for you? Oh, this place is so relaxing and safe. Because I've got all comfortable things here which I need. It's my example. But again, I would like you to answer these three questions describing the place where you feel at home. Here, here are just three examples. Let's read them. You may use them while making up your small story about 
the place where you feel at home. Let's read. I feel at home in my bedroom. My bed is white small, but it's very comfortable. I like lying on it and thinking about my life. It's great. Look, this person used modifiers to make just adjectives stronger or weaker. Oh, it's a good hint. Let's return back. My bed is quite small, just not simply small, but quite small, and it's very comfortable. And now let's look at the second example. I feel at home when I'm with my family. My mom, my dad are great, and my brother is my best friend. I love doing things with them. So it's just the second story about home. And let's look at the third example. I feel at home in the living room. Our sofa is really comfortable. I love sitting there. On my own, uh, they are on my own reading a good book. May I just, I love sitting there on my own means without anybody reading a good book. Oh, yes, sometimes we people like to sit and read or do other things on our own without anyone. It's a good phrase. You may use it. And now it's time for you to open your exercise book and write down what is home for you? I hope you are ready. You have found or you got the place in your house or in your flat where you feel home. And right now, I would like to say you goodbye. Hope that this guide was useful for you. And the last words which I'm saying to you, good luck. Hope to meet you again. Bye-bye.